Secondly, we're looking at adoption of the minutes from our previous meeting on September 28th. And do we have a first for recommending adoption of those minutes? Eddie, thank you. Second? Anyone? <laughs> Me, Jeremy and Mike. Great. Good morning or afternoon. Sorry I was late. Where are you? Where's oh, Vince? There I'm you not... are, bottom right. Hi, Vince. Hey. Good to see you. Good to see we you. Were just, we were just adopting the minutes uh, from our previous meeting there. Oh, sorry. We did a few introductions and uh, it'll probably come to light as we move on who's who and what everybody's up to here. So we'll just keep rolling, I think. And number three, Steph, do we have any public commentary no that's come up? Okay, great. Then we can waste that five minutes allocated somewhere else. <laughs> Number four, new business. Snug Cove Cultural Center. Center. Um, Daniel and, and Robin and Marguerite are on our agenda. Daniel, do you want to introduce that? Um, I'll just do a brief introduction by way of context for the design panel. So this is um, essentially the second part of the Cove Commons project. So the building behind the library, and this is about the landscaping around and the, the programmable space. Um, this is a little different for the design panel in that this property is not within the development permit area. So they're not submitting this um, design as part of a development permit application. Rather, staff are referring the design to the design panel um, in advance of it being presented to council for council's approval for, um, for the work on the property. So um, we don't have sort of design guidelines, but we're looking for the design panel's input in terms of is this fitting in keeping with the Sun Cove character. Um, but then I'll turn it over to Marguerite and Robin in terms of walking us through the actual design um, and what's proposed. Thanks, Daniel. Great. Hi, welcome, everybody. Um, am I able to share my screen? Is that the idea, Daniel, that I'll share? And um, OK, let me just rearrange things so I've got everything in the right place here. Okay, oh, no, that's, we don't need to look at the agenda. <laughs> um, okay, so I will share my screen, my messy screen here. And uh, is that coming through? Do you see that yep. properly? Yeah, yep. okay, great. Great, Robin. So, um, and let me know if I need to zoom in on anything. I'll try and sort of fill the screen here. Okay, um, so this project, as uh, Daniel mentioned really briefly, is the Snug Cove Cultural Corner. And um, we have a little blurb here, which if you've had a chance to read through the agenda already, um, it's really a continuation of the, um, the project that started with the Cove Commons building being built. And then now this is the completion of it by completing the exterior spaces. So um, completing a plaza space um, out the front, so you can see here this area near the big tree and the, the connection, the entrance of the hearth gallery and the, the old library building there. So completing this plaza space as um, uh, an outdoor public space for um, residents on the island space that can be activated through different activities. Um, and then also the backside, you can see it here, uh, where the Cove Commons part of the, the library part of the Cove Commons looks out onto um, this uh, landscaped area. And if you've been by recently, this area looks entirely different because it's been completely dug up for the connection to the, the sewer and everything these days, but um, we're gonna be um, you know, uh, re-landscaping and hopefully making it look much more beautiful and pleasant. Uh, so that's kind of the high level of what we're talking about. And I'll go to the next slide. That's just a good overview of what we're proposing for this project. Um, and I might just touch on, and um, please, uh, Jamie and, and Jennifer, let me know if you do want to jump in at some point. Um, this is part of um, a grant program, and I don't remember the specific of the grant, but the um, library and the hearth did apply jointly uh, for a grant um, for this project, which they were successful in. So that's one of the things that they've got funding for this. And a lot of it was focused on exterior space. Uh, I believe there was a COVID aspect to it. So it was about creating a lot of sheltered space that people could use to socialize outside. So that was one of the goals as well. So um, 
We've got two outdoor covered spaces that we're proposing that could be program spaces. So the one, the central one in the plaza, which we have some 3D images of later, um, is a covered outdoor space that we've integrated now with an accessible uh, ramp that will come down to this plaza. So right now, uh, the main access is there's a stairwell here and then there is a lovely ramp here, but it doesn't really truly meet code for people who have mobility issues or in wheelchairs. So um, with the addition of this covered outdoor space and the integration of this ramp, it means uh, from Cardina will now have full accessibility down to here without having to go all the way down and up. Um, we're also adding an accessible path to kind of complete the circuit, if you will. Um, right now, it's just sort of a rough gravel path that goes past the, the tourism and carrying um, Caring Circle offices there. Um, so we'll have a new paved pathway that'll come around and connect up to these existing pathways. Um, as I mentioned, there's a covered outdoor space here. And then this is um, uh, a new building that's a storage building uh, that's replacing those sheds. And I think you can see them a little bit. Yeah, in the corner, there are those three sheds, which I'm not even sure if they're still on site. They're, if they are, they're mo being moved soon. So we're planning to replace that with now a, a new building that will be built and in, in hopefully stylistically meet in, um, uh, match in with the rest of the buildings. Um, and, and we'll obviously be better quality storage um, for both the library and the hearth. We'll redesign this courtyard and we have some more detail about what that's going to look like. And we're also proposing, oh, we have a better slide later, a couple of covered seating um, spots here. Um, so that's another aspect of it. And then the final one is just a small kind of more practical one. Um, the multi-use path, which I, you're probably aware of is, is gonna be coming through here at some point in the future. And we're going to be widening this pathway a little bit, um, making use of that path, that new multi-use path and then widening it here. Um, uh, to allow access for service vehicles essentially to the front of the library because that was something that the library identified as an issue for the you know historic building and be able to maintain it properly to be able to get larger vehicles right up to the front of the building um, to be able to maintain it and even you know putting up and down Christmas lights those kinds of things um, so we're just going to widen this path so that they don't have to because I think right now they they basically squeeze through here and it doesn't work very well so that was the final aspect of the program. Um, is there any questions so far? Sorry, I always jump ahead and, and, and whiz through. Is it, do, Mike, do you want me to just kind of keep going through the whole thing and then we'll come back with questions? Yeah, I think so, Robin, unless someone okay. puts their hand up and says, hey, just one sec. Yeah, yeah. And, do, and do vocalize because my screen's here that I'm looking at and then you guys are all these tiny little faces off to the side and I can't see That's you all. Right. So um, please yeah. do kind of shout out if there's something you want to ask. But yeah, I'll keep going through and then we can open it up to questions. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Okay. So um, this is what this new uh, covered programming space is gonna look like at the plaza. So it's really um, a roof structure. There's uh, no walls. Um, it's gonna be held up on, um, it's a heavy timber frame. Um, it's still to be engineered. So this is really conceptual of what the, um, and just kind of an idea of what we'd like the roof structure, but it would be heavy timber, it'll be exposed. Um, and uh, we're gonna be working with um, uh, an engineer to design the exact structure. And then uh, it's, we're at the moment, we're still determining the roof material, but we're hoping we can make it be metal. So it'll be um, low maintenance and it'll be in a very neutral tone. I think I've got, we got an image of the color there to blend in with the other roof structures. Um, and as I mentioned before, it'll it'll blend in with this accessible pathway that's coming down. Um, and there's a bunch of different programs. If you do have questions about the different programming, we can bring in Jamie and Jennifer um, after the, I've, I've finished presenting everything, they can talk about what kind of program they want, but all sorts of different things, um, you know, having holding class, Classes, having lectures and talks, um, all sorts of small performances. Um, yeah, it's not a huge space, but it's certainly enough for a few different tables or a small ensemble um, of people playing or um, even having a small class there led by somebody at the front. Uh, poetry readings, I think that was something um, Jamie had talked about as well. So there's a bunch of different programs that can take place. Uh, we're also going to be expanding, and so I have another slide where we get to the landscape, expanding the existing paving. So it's this sort of gray paving that's happening there, and that'll be expanded in to create a bit more of a large your plaza space so it can have more functions in there. So that's the first um, covered space. Uh, and those are a couple of renderings um, of what that's going to look like um, in the context there. And definitely we're taking our cues from the Cove Commons building. Um, we'd be using similar um, wood tones and structures and the heavy timber and everything to blend in with that building. This is an idea of what the color might be for the roof. If we do use metal, um, that's the plan. And it would be because um, we sort of, I'm sorry, it's a very small picture there, but uh, wanting to blend in with the sort of two roofs, which are those cedar shakes, and they're kind of have a slightly brown and slightly gray kind of tones to them at the moment. Um, so that's Great. those images. So that's that covered space. 
Um, this is the other covered space and storage buildings. So um, they're again, heavy timber look to them. Um, there's, it's just a large open functional space, uh, no fixed furniture. So the idea is that it's a programming space, they'll bring out furniture or whatever it is that they need. Um, it's connected to that large uh, green area of grass um, between the um, tourism building, right? And the caring circle and, and this space where the old sheds were. Um, so we're hoping that's a big green space. So lots of kids programming and all different sorts of options for programming to happen there with a covered space as well. Um, and then the other really important function for this is that having this storage building. So the ability for the hearth and the library to have some indoor, you know, protected um, weatherized storage, and then a small one for, you know, recycling and garbage and those kinds of functional things that they can share. Um, and in terms of the aesthetics, we're planning to use um, a hardy shingle product, um, and we would want to paint it as closely as we can uh, to the heart of the Cove Commons building. So in sort of that, you know, slightly green kind of, it's, it's a bit of a whitewash, I think, kind of green finish on cedar shingle. Um, and we'd be aiming to get a, you know, a shade of paint that would most closely match that. And we would, it doesn't quite read as well in the renderings, but the doors themselves would also be painted out. So it would look just really simple and inobtrusive because the doors are going to be fairly plain and, and secure. So they're not, um, yeah, they're not like nice wood glass doors or anything. They're just going to be really simple doors. So it would all just be painted out. And this one, um, again, for sort of cost effectiveness and longevity will be um, an asphalt shingle roof. Uh, again, that we choose a color, um, like a brown gray shade that would blend in with the existing uh, shingled roofs. Uh, these are the other two um, structures that will be just these really small seats with a roof. And that was, again, part of the grant about providing covered outdoor spaces where people can socialize. So we'd have two of them. One would be, this is sort of the library building there in the existing parking lot. So one would be over here. Um, and part of the purpose being this would be a bulletin board on the parking lot side. And then it would also from the space just in front of the library there. Uh, would provide a little bit of a visual shield to the um, to the parking lot there um, and have some seating. We have the, the concrete is um, slightly expanded so that um, somebody in a wheelchair could also sit and be under cover. Oh, I think this rendering's not quite, the roof's slightly asymmetrical. So it will overhang this concrete pad a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so that somebody in a wheelchair can sit next to their, you know, um, people on a bench and be covered. Somebody with a stroller can come and sit and have it be covered. So that was the idea is to make it accessible for everybody. So we're proposing to have two of those. And this one, when I, I'll show a little bit more about that courtyard design. Um, and, oh, that's the, I think we've got a separate, oh, sorry, no, that's not the right one, this one. So um, this is the landscape plan. And so uh, we've got, again, uh, that new accessible pathway, and that will be these pavers that match the existing plaza and everything else that happened in that Cove Commons development a couple of years ago. Uh, we're proposing just next to the building to have large river rocks just to keep it very low maintenance um, and just simple to keep proper drainage because I think there's sort of some drainage issues along the side of the building there. So just keeping that side of the building just very practical and simple with large river rocks. And then as we get all, there's a more detailed plan of this. So I'll get to those details in a minute. Um, as I mentioned before, expanding that brick pathway with hopefully we can salvage enough bricks to, to match in that. Um, and, uh, oh, the expansion of the paving. So I'll just maybe zoom in on this covered outdoor space in the plaza a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Um, the, ex the little gray bits are what we're proposing to expand. Um, so the plaza is there at the moment in the white, and then we're just going to add a little bit more to, to fill out that space. So it's a little, um, a little larger. Um, and we have had advice from an arborist. Uh, just recently, we met on site last week to tell us how close we can get to this tree. Um, so that's, we've had a bit of advice on that. We are, oh, and I apologize, I think I missed it. We are also proposing under this tree, a small uh, bench seating. Um, and that's a little bit to be determined. We had advice from the arborists that we're gonna have to hand dig any footings that go in that tree because we definitely don't wanna negatively impact this tree. So uh, we still have to determine if it's in the budget and if that's going to happen that seating. But if we, if we can make it happen, we're gonna have a bench seating around the, the base of that tree, just again, for more seating options outside. Uh, but sorry, back to the um, landscape. A lot of this, the landscaping we're hoping to keep very simple. Um, we really just wanna match what's there because especially in this front plaza area, um, we've got a couple of photos here. What's working there is we think working really well. We've been in consultation um, with the municipality with Bonnie and Carla who, and um, Bonnie who's in charge of I think landscaping and maintenance and then Carla who actually does, comes onto site and does um, all of the landscaping and, and maintenance at the library. And so uh, we've been in consultation with them. So the idea in this front plaza area is to simply replicate what's there now. And so we'll, we'll replace or, or if we can save and, and replant um, the different plants that are there. So we're not proposing any changes except to literally just the layout and the location. So no planting changes are proposed here. 
Um, and then I'll go to the next page um, about the details of this courtyard space at the back. So there's the existing library, there's the Cove Commons with their large windows that look out. Um, so this is the place that's fairly dug up at the moment. And there's a, several of these trees. These are trees that are existing that are, um, I think they're still all kind of in their early stages. So they're looking a little spindly at the moment, but they'll look great, I'm sure in a few years. Um, so we're proposing to keep all of those trees essentially where they are. Uh, we're proposing some uh, tall grasses, and I can't recall the name of these. I'm sure uh, it's written down somewhere, uh, but these tall grasses that are already existing around the library property. So those would be a border here to the parking lot and a little bit of a border here along this pathway that goes into what, what is now basically the entrance uh, to the library these days. Um, and a couple of small benches just so that people, and, and we chose purposely something that would be similar style to this uh, backlist so that people could just have a seat and, and wait or if they're waiting to get into the library or they can kind of turn themselves around and face into this courtyard if they're having lunch or having a visit with somebody. So um, the idea that could be multifunctional. That is where this new covered seating that I showed a, just a moment ago. So with the roof and the accessibility on one side and everything. So there is a covered seating area um, that people can sit and enjoy the look of this courtyard. And then just here, which is currently kind of uh, just sort of gravelly, it's where the um, large septic tanks were. So we're going to sort of remediate that and fill that in um, and do uh, essentially kind of a, we need to want to look at a pretty low maintenance uh, kind of zero scaping um, style. So lots of rocks, um, uh, different kinds of, you know, just basic simple plants that will grow in and amongst the rocks be as low maintenance as we can. That was the feedback we got from uh, the municipality. Um, that they don't have a lot of resources to, to really maintain. It would have been ideal to do plantings here similar to the front near the plaza, but they kind of gave us the feedback that it's very labor intensive to maintain those and they'd rather something simpler here. So we're proposing to go with, um, with a zero escaping sort of garden layout uh, similar to this picture here. Um, so that's pretty much the end of ours. And I feel like then that show, hopefully will leave us lots of time for questions. Um, do you want me to leave? And, well, maybe I'll stop sharing for the moment. And then if people have particular questions, I can go back to certain pages. And maybe Jennifer or Jamie, do you have anything quick that you want to add that I missed? Or do you want to just wait for questions? Is there anything that you think maybe I missed? Um, we can wait for questions. I just wanted to mention that um, while the, the shed building, um, that covered space coming off of it is really going to be helpful for the library for our children's programming because it's an outdoor space where they can launch bottle rockets or run around that's not near the large, the main streets. Um, so that's one of the uses to that space that I think will be really helpful. Even story time, anything we wanna do with kids outside. Yeah, the covered area up at the elementary school when it went in instantly got a lot of use, including jazzercise. <laughs> oh, Betty, you're saying something with the mute on. Have to there you go. go ahead, Betty. I'll mute myself. Um, it just while well, we're talking about that corner, I've been down to look at the site quite a few times this week, and I was actually involved in the design of the um, Cove Commons from the very beginning. So I have sort of some idea about how things function and what our goals were. But it really strikes me whether you're walking down um, Bowen Trunk Road towards the library or whether you're walking along Cardina and looking down between the buildings, that there's really a miss op missed opportunity in terms of design there that um, there is, there's a huge need for programming. You also talked about wanting maybe to have some performances and things. And, and to me, that's the largest available space you can work with. And it's also accessible to the restrooms and the kitchen facilities and things. And actually both the library and the Cove Commons have been, or the gallery have been pushing people to come in that back entrance for all kinds of reasons um, over the last couple of years. So I sort of feel like, well, all this energy's out the front in the corner of the, the library that where really the design opportunities are, are back there. And, and that we've just got sort of a pedestrian shed with an extended roof and nothing very exciting where that corner really should it should pull us in and it should visually connect the library the gallery and the caring circle you see all three buildings back there so i um 
I challenge you to take another look at that space and see if you can do something that's a little more exciting and a little more pulling all of those three together. Robin, could you bring up that site plan just for a sec again? The overall, yeah. Perfect. So Betty, just to be clear, you're talking about the area that is essentially creating a, a quad, if you will, or a courtyard. It says new shed and outdoor programming space. That area. Space. Yeah, yeah, all back in there. There's a lot of space there. It seems to me that's where the real programming opportunity is. Gotcha. And I, yeah, and I think, and Jennifer, Jamie, feel free to jump in as well. I think that we do see the opportunity there for programming for sure. And I think it's um, in terms of, you know, we do have a budget that we're working with. So we need to be mindful of where we're spending those dollars. And I think we wanted the more, uh, prominent, you know, the more like if I dare us call it statement, you know, like the kind of the more prominent feature of architecture and, and statement to be out front in the plaza where it is viewed more from the public. Um, and, and admittedly, the one back here is much more driven by budget function. It's going to be simpler to build. It's an easier, simpler building. So uh, definitely that was, in my mind, a conscious decision that let's, if we're going to put some extra money into a design feature or something that's a little more, um, uh, you know, uh, a, a little bit more of an interesting, um, intriguing design. Let's put it out here in that front space. Uh, so I definitely hear what you're saying. And I think that, uh, I think that maybe it's going to be, this one is more um, uh, like programmed space in terms of people are gonna sign up. It's gonna be driven by the facilities, by hearth, by the library to actually to have, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering the word, structured programming. So it's going to be structured programs to invite people out there and use that functionally. Whereas I'm hoping the plazas maybe, although yes, it will have structured programming, maybe is a little more interactive and people are going to just, like I'm imagining people, you know, just arriving, tourists in the summer, people waiting for the bus, they might just come and sit under this shelter, you know, and really enjoy it. And because it's just right there. So that's kind of where I came from. Again, Jennifer, Jamie, if you want to jump in and, and um, if you have any thoughts on that. Well, let me continue or, my thought. Yep, there. please, I, yeah. Um, when I looked at the plan, I, I, and I think I'm not unlike a lot of Bone Island people, consider the library one of our only sort of stately historic buildings. And I, I think we need to give it lots of space and, mm -hmm. and really just let the plantings be gracious and spacious in front of it. And I really feel like putting all these little benches, the, the feature pavilion is, is um, it's chaotic. It's distracting from the facade of the library. It's competing with it. And I don't think it's a very functional programming space there. I mean, I'm a space planner. I feel like it's, um, perfect the way it is. I really like it. It could use a few chairs for people who are waiting for somebody to come out of the gallery, but it's really a nice graceful space since they built the new gardens with the, the wheelchair ramp coming down. And I think by the time you basically destroy the gardens, putting a new concrete ramp down in the middle of it, and then this attempted um, you know, a, a really noticeable structure that's going to compete with the front of the library, and it's not going to be highly functional. I feel like, you know, there's all over Bowen, we're sort of trying to constrict the biggest number of, of buildings into the smallest space. We don't need to do that here. I think we need to let it breathe a little. So I actually object to that pavilion at the front. Hmm. Thanks, Betty. Others have... Uh... Thoughts on this? Other folks on the panel? Yeah, I, I have uh, just, I, I find it interesting. One, one thing that I, I find problematic is the focus on the main, the main entrance to, to the library being behind it. Um, the whole idea, it's, it's almost like, uh, it's almost an affront to the building <laughs> um, <laughs> in the sense that that, that the, the road facing entry just invites you and then you're defeated if you can't go in there. Whereas uh, having it behind and, and not visible just seems plainly wrong. The self-evident 
entryway it should be in the front, I think, uh, just as a starter. I did have a question about the um, in the uh, the area with the the uh, between in that that space. What do they call it? The the plaza in the, on um, Cardina Road. Uh, what the thought was about orienting that shelter, if indeed you had one, in that direction, and rather not the opposite direction. In other words, south, uh, south uh, easterly facing. Hmm. Um, well, we were hoping to make use of what's now the existing plaza and, you know, slightly expanded um, to use that for, again, for these programming purposes. So that was something that the clients really wanted to make use of as this existing plaza space and having that covered programming space be able to face onto it. And we looked, we did explore a couple of different options as to how, you know, if we could make it kind of do everything and face all different directions. And in the end, we just decided that was asking one small you know, shelter building to do too much. Um, so we instead decided that um, it would be best to orient it towards this plaza really as, just as functionally so that that plaza can be used for people standing or seated or if it is in fact a, you know, a performance of poetry or reading or, or a small uh, music ensemble or something that you can have seating or people could potentially even dance, who knows, and that it's actually on the paved area as opposed to the other way where uh, it's it's grass and we've got that large tree that of course nobody, we, we all want to make sure that tree stays. Um, um, instead of, so that would have made it a little, a lot harder to orient audiences if they were sitting in that grass area around the tree towards, um, the covered space. Um, yeah. And, and I think also with the hearth's entry there, I think the hearth has lots of goals and aims of using that covered programming space. So having it right near their entrance and oriented towards that was, um, desirable as well. I, I just had, a <clears throat> well, when I looked at that space initially, reflexively, I thought if you're going to have any kind of a a covered area, albeit modestly, that that should, well, my instinct was that it should be uh, in the elbow between the gallery and the library, in other words, south mm. east facing. And so that, 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 that little corner there. Yeah. And yeah. that the, this, where, where the landscaping is along Cardina Road, which is sort of a stepped affair, I just thought, well, that, that could just be kind of natural a kind of natural seating, be it um, mm. rock wall supported with grass on top or something to facilitate it as just to take advantage of the natural terrain there. Um, that was just my initial uh, thought. Um, so I was kind of curious as to why you had it facing the other way. And we did explore that a little bit in the beginning about putting it in here. And ultimately we sort of decided with the architecture that's happening there, and I'm sorry, I don't have a photo ready on at hand, with the intersection of the historic building, that connector and the new building, when we looked at you know the different roofs that were coming to play in there, we, it, there wasn't um, an easy or obvious solution as to how to make that space look nice and interact with both of the buildings um, and provide the, the covered space that they were looking for. So we did explore that in the beginning and in the end left that one and went with a separate structure separate from the buildings. Sure. Yeah. Other thoughts? Hey, Mike. Um, Hi, David. I also remember when this code comments came to us, we had trouble with the connection of the two buildings. So I understand how Robin would have a bit of issues there too. I don't have a yep. picture in front of me, but I like it. Would it made sense to me to put it there? But I also remember how much, how much trouble we had tying those visually tying those buildings. If you recall that one, Mike. You sure do. <laughs> and like Jeremy, I wish the library would keep the entrance, the entrance. And I understand their reasonings behind it, but I still prefer coming in those doors. As he says, it's most welcoming you come in that way, but that's not what's on the table at this point. My question is about those covered sitting areas, those mm. two. Um, yeah. Robin, they kind of look like a, a NERP um, shelter <laughs> if you will they're they just seem pretty blocky that right. i like the idea there's a seat i like the idea that there's yeah. shelter the rain i think it's great that's a bit of a block to the, to the parking lot as well as hey here's another place we can have instead of on the telephone poles we can have notice board but something about that roof doesn't work for me for that one or the one over mm -hmm. by the um the other shelter so my only comment on this whole thing 
really was about those two structures and should there not be more of an attempt to make that roof more like the existing buildings, some kind of a pitch. I mean, you're doing great work with the uh, timber frame, tearing it from the one, putting it up at the front one. But these two, other than I see, you know, there's some knees and there's some vertical, but the mass just seems, you got this massive, I don't know, a flat roof on top of a yeah. bench. So mm -hmm. that was my comment and that's all I have to say. Otherwise I'm I pretty much support the uh, process. I like what's happening with understanding that with everything there's there's reasonings why you have to have the the buildings behind with the outdoor covered area and the kids can run around makes perfect sense and the library or or the gallery can expand and that can be used at the same time as some other function but i wish we could change those roof lines there you go that's me thanks david robin could you go back to that site plan again Sorry to make no, you jump around can. here. I just... No, no, that's no problem at all. That one. Oh, there we go. Yeah, right. perfect. So I, I live on just on Venture Road and walk through here a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the pathways, one of the things that I'm constantly um, <clears throat> thinking about is when you've got an outdoor space uh, and, and you're doing something to it, what is the intent for the future. In other words, what is the definition of that space? If you were to put words around it, one of the things that comes to mind right away, if you're looking due west, I guess, from the Cove Commons building, from the gallery, out to that grassy area with the existing <clears throat> trees, currently you're kind of looking through, well, it's been cleaned up a bit. There's been quite a mess out there, but that mess is now removed and you're looking at something that's, that's waiting for some activation. But it seems to me that and I'm not sure I heard this in your wording, but that area, for instance, looks looks to me like a pensive area, something that's more aesthetic and not something that you necessarily frequent or use other than a few benches where you're looking in on something that's got a xerophytic planting area, it's got some grass, it's, it's a place where you don't necessarily perform an activity, but it's got an aesthetic need relative to all the other parts. Mm -hmm. And then that, if you if you sort of look at the other patio areas or the other grassy areas and just put a little bit more definition into them in terms of what the long-term goal is. And, and I know that I heard a little bit about the area by the covered space because that came up as a question and that that probably relates to that covered area in a way that if you're sitting in under the cover because it's raining, um, suddenly the sun comes out, you know, how do those two spaces work together? Are there benches over there as well? Or is that just simply a backdrop of park in behind that field? Mm. And then the area out in front of the library, that's just noted as brick. Mm. I'm, I'm kind of um, thinking somewhat along the lines of what, what Jeremy's saying in that, you know, there was a time that that building was parallel to the road and it got rotated and pushed back a bit in order to create that space that is was done in order to make more of an entry to the building. And I know it's tricky now that the gallery's there because you've got essentially two buildings with two entries that are in different locations. And how do you how do you just how do you clean that up so that either they're defined as very different or they work more closely together so it feels like they're more connected. I, I understand the, the reason for the, I'll call it a band shell, because I've heard neighbors talking about it for months, that this band shell is coming. <laughs> and and they were, they've been concerned about the sounds that that will generate. And, you know, that's, that's another compartment of this that we, we won't necessarily talk about. But um, one question for you I had about that, that outdoor space. So you obviously raised it a couple of steps. And that, in my mind, is so that there can be performance type activities there. People might dance, like I've seen going on outside of the Cove Commons front door. And but but it is a bit tricky because it limits the amount of plaza you've got because it's now on two levels. Um, did you think about the possibility of having that with with no steps and it it's just a covering? 
No, I think um, the brief from the beginning was to have it as a um, as slightly elevated kind of um, idea so that, again, not just musical performances, but all kinds of performances, classes, if there's perhaps a, a larger class, the instructors up there, a couple of steps up, and then there's people in the plaza, you know, doing something following the instructor. Yep. Um, so I think that was the idea is that it really was something that was raised. Um, mm -hmm. And we do imagine part of the benefit we saw also of having and why we kind of wrapped the steps all the way around is, you know, I don't know how much I'm going to guess out of the entire year, 90, 95% of the time, this is not going to be, in, well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but you know, what I mean? the vast majority of the time, it's going to be for public use. It's going to be empty. It's not necessarily going to be summer. Probably. Yeah. There's going to be lots of different programming happening, yep. but we see a lot of the time it's going to be empty for people to wander in and eat. So we, we wanted, we put a little bit of seating at the back. We see these seats, these, um, the stairs, they're, they're sort of the height being that people can easily sit on them. You know, you often do that yep. up front of a building, you bring your own lunch, you sit and chat and have a coffee with friends or whatever. So we sort of wanted to have it so it was that scale so people could sit. So you could actually have multiple different parties of people using the covered shelter. And the roof does extend out to cover, you know, out to the edge here um, and using that bench. So it really was meant to be, yes, work for all the different programming and potential performances and all of that stuff. But also when it wasn't in use for that, that it really was this great outdoor space that people yep. could come and use and the spot to meet a friend for coffee or for lunch or something like that. Yeah. Gotcha. I also see that the ramp as it comes down accesses the top of that platform. So if yeah, you're wheeling, yeah. wheeling stuff, you can get there without going up or down any steps. Yeah, and that was the idea to try to integrate Great. it in. So take the opportunity, use that access for both ways. So if somebody's coming in and delivering something to put in there, or if um, tables and chairs on, you know, big carts are coming up from the, the um, library or that, they can wheel yeah. them up and get them onto there. And at the same time, we can make it accessible. And so it was just kind of, um, it worked overall. Gotcha. I, I, I guess to summarize what I, what's going on in my mind is, those outdoor spaces might have a little bit more uh, clarity in how they're different. So in other words, what each one of them is for in a way that's either textual or, or graphic in terms of the, the coloring. And, and so that, you know, people are going to start to see these images because this is what's coming and they have a clearer understanding of what it's all about and why, you know, how, how this environment is being improved by not just the structures, but also the use and the intent of of what kind of urban change is happening for mm -hmm. for the people yeah yeah and i think the biggest no desire is to make use of this plaza you know that mm -hmm. it's there partially and to really activate it and allow for use and sorry i interrupted there betty <laughs> concrete I, it looks like it but i don't know if that's just the rendering the proposal at the moment is that the ramp would be concrete um, and at the moment that the stage um, level would be concrete. We're certainly open to suggestions if there's others and we, we would look at some costing options when this goes out for tender um, and whether it makes sense, we'll have to get a little bit of advice whether it makes sense to do a different material on one or the other, but um, at the moment, that's what they are. I know that um, just down the street where the circle went in, there's a bunch of retaining systems and they were all done in Allen block mm. instead of concrete. Not that I'm suggesting that here, but it might be an option that um, is similar in cost. And with mm -hmm. between Allen block faces, there might be pavers instead of concrete. Again, yeah. I'm not involved in the costing and the budgeting, but it, it could yeah. soften the look of the concrete a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're certainly open to that feedback from you guys. So I'll, I'll make note of that. Yeah. Well, it's also that whole issue of CO2 and trying to be climate conscious and Mm -hmm. It's not our favorite material, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And visually, and I know it does these particular renderings, I don't know if it shows up a little bit better. Visually, we are hoping to do a lot of planting around it. So um, appreciate your comment, Betty, about the environment and everything. That is certainly something to consider. Um, but also visually, they'll hopefully be, you, you won't see a ton of face of concrete. Uh, these were going to be some um, big rocks right. to retain a raised planter bed. Same thing on the other side here and maintaining that planted edge along the sidewalk. Um, so it wouldn't be this big sort of, you know, visual there, they wouldn't be big walls of concrete. Gotcha. Other thoughts? Yeah, I, mean, uh, um, I was, I was thinking, I just wanted to second, uh, Dave's, uh, comments about the, the covered benches. I, I think I, I mm -hmm. totally understand, uh, the utility of those and, but, so there is something, as he said, described it blocky about them that seems a bit incongruous uh, with the library building um, in itself. I'm not sure what the exact answer is, 
The other thing I wanted just to point out, which is probably obvious to most people is um, the, the front of the library is people sit there because it's sunny in the shoulder seasons. And that's a, a really critical thing on Bowen Island. And the same would be the case for any other uh, area that's developed outside the area, the focus being on um, optimizing uh, the chance to sit in the sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, any ways that that could be enhanced uh, or facilitated would be really, I think, beneficial to the whole concept. And I'm not sure if that so-called band shell uh, would, would create shade in that area. Right now, it's pretty sunny, uh, which is nice. Um, but anyway, it's just something to think about. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. I don't want to be too repetitive, but I also had a very similar thought to David in that I also felt that those covered benches seemed potentially unnecessarily kind of hefty and obstructive in terms of obstructing the longer view of this kind of beautiful historic building. So I, I just wanted to reiterate his, his earlier comments too, that I they seem quite kind of hefty. Thanks. Yeah, well, we can definitely look at lighting them up or potentially maybe we'll look at an option like sort of Dave kind of said, maybe it's a gable roof that is more complementary to the existing. Yeah, we can look at that. Yeah. I, I also, um, when I was making notes, I was, I had a question about the one that's on the corner of um, Bowen Trunk Road and the um, parking area, because that area is so chaotic when the ferry empties and people pull part way in and then other people can't see to come out. And I'm not sure that having a covered sitting area with a back on it in that particular location isn't gonna actually make it more dangerous. And again, it just feels like another clunky piece out in front of a historic building. I mean, there's quite a few benches in that plaza already. I've never seen them all full. And I agree, We most of us sit against the wall in the sun. I see lots of reason to have benches in the areas where you might be watching a programming or waiting for somebody in a program, but I'm not sure they need to be right out on the, the road in front of the building. That's a good point, Betty. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Betty. Just a comment, um, I haven't been at the library too long, but in the few months that I've been here, we have a lot of folks coming in wanting to eat food and you can't do that in our buildings. And when it's raining outside, we have to send them all the way down to uh, the dock. And so that piece of a place where people can eat together outside under a covered area is something that comes up again and again and something that the community would probably really appreciate. Um, and just a quick comment, the front entrance of the library is still the front entrance of the library. Uh, during COVID, we had to create a single flow for people through the building, but we've opened it back up so that you can come in through there. Um, so it is, again, the front entrance, just so that we're clear. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Betty, did you have your hand up there? Yeah, I guess I have a lot to say, but I just have a question about three accessible ramps for this area. It, because when you come into the front of the library, it's absolutely flat all the way in and into that plaza where the band shell is. And you've got the one coming through the back between the visitor center and the Cove Commons. And you've got the nice curvy new one that they did with the new landscaping. I still don't get why we need another wheelchair ramp there. Is that code or <laughs> well the one we've designed will meet code so the curvy one uh technically uh to my knowledge doesn't meet code it's very nice and practical and it probably for a lot of people it could work and certainly if you're in a wheelchair with somebody guiding you and holding you but technically it doesn't meet code because there's requirements of it has to be straight and this and has to have handrails and guardrails and all of those kinds of things what? um certainly this path does because obviously it's just a garden path and it's relatively straight so this one certainly does um and uh so i think that was it was sort of a multi-purpose thing right we, we went back and forth as a design about how do you get access if it is raised up which we wanted getting you know 
chairs and things, tables up to it. And if people are coming to perform, they're parking and getting their gear down there. So it was sort of a, a multi-purpose win, right? To be able to have access to that stage, to be able to make this, you know, formal uh, code compliant, uh, you know, access down here and to the hearth. And, and the other interesting thing was, uh, this was feedback we got, is there apparently, and I don't quite remember the history of it, but before the Cove Commons was done and, and they rate when they kind of basically raised Cardina and all of that planting went in, people used to cut across here from essentially the bus stop and they would cut across here to get to the shops and everything there. And um, so now they actually kind of walk through the planting and you can actually still see on the ground, I was there the other day, you can see the desire path of where people are continuing to go and where there was a pathway. So with, when this isn't here, you've got to have to go down those steps or all the way down to the corner. And so we also saw a need to kind of in a certain way, um, uh, restore that historic pathway when people wanted to cut from here down here and in front of the library and over. So it sort of just was a win-win for a bunch of different reasons to put that in and make it code compliant. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So again, um, I, at the outset of this, I think we talked about the fact that we're not in a DP area and what we're talking about is, is just general ideology regarding what we're reviewing instead of passing some kind of uh, motion towards creating direction for change if it's needed. Am I correct on that, Steph or Daniel? That feels appropriate. I can gather my notes. So, and just so in other words, this is just information to, in theory, provide further thought on what we're what we're reviewing. Possible ideas for how things might adjust, if if possible. Yes. That's what I understood. Daniel said. Yeah. So, any other thoughts on uh, on the the precinct, Jamie? Thank I, you. Thanks, everyone, for your input. Um, really appreciate hearing different points of view on this on this project and finishing up our landscaping around this gorgeous area. Um, so a couple things. One of them is the grant that we have applied for and we're successful receiving is a $398,000 grant um, through the Community Economic Recovery Infrastructure Program. And part of the grant that we wrote included outdoor covered stage, additional covered seating areas, expansion of the plaza and walkway, and a completion of hard and soft landscaping around both library and the gallery. That's what was approved. Um, so we can't sway too, too far from that. Otherwise, we won't be in compliance with the grant. Uh, and we do have to provide, obviously, a final report on that. Um, and that was accepted by council when we um, when we applied for the grant. So I just wanted to fill you in on that, that we're, we, because it was an infrastructure um, um, recovery grant, it was about outdoor space and it was about spaces for people to be safely with the COVID um, um, that, that there were, we would create these these safe spaces for people to be outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's kind of how we've come at this project is, is creating these different sort of blocks of areas that people can visit and be safe, um, but also be functional, not just, yep. not just pretty, you know, just we want like, you know, like Jen was saying, places for people to go and eat um, or people to visit or to have a, you know, an artist paint, painting as a plein air demonstration or someone doing a book reading or a slam poetry reading or kids programming. Uh, to me, it is all what we've planned is it's very functional and it's very active. And, and the, the, the space out front of the gallery, um, it is the gateway to our community. So when people come off the ferry, um, it's already, you know, bustling. There's already, you know, what's going on? Oh my gosh, what a great community this is. I want to go see what's happening on that little plaza area on my way to the tourism office on my way to hike in, out to Crippen Park. Um, it just creates this really great buzz of a corner of the entrance our gateway to our community. Um, I also wanted to note that the, you know, I know that this outdoor back spaces is, is um, 
waiting for something to happen. It's a beautiful space. It's cozy. It's it's easy to access. Um, but it, there is no entrance to the gallery back there. So it, it is really our backyard. It's not a, it's not, there's no front entrance to the gallery. So to put um, a bigger sort of stage area back there, it, 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 it is a quiet area. It's more for programming than for um, trying to entice people to come around the building if there's somebody reading poetry, because they won't see that. They won't understand what's going on behind in our backyard. Um, and again, I think it's more of a programming space where people are going because they, they're there because of a program. Mm -hmm. um, appreciate your comments on the, the roof pitch on the shelters. And we can certainly work on that and maybe make them a little bit more authentic to, to suit the library, maybe a little more old style. Um, but we do have restricted budgets, so we have to you know, we have to be careful with how much we spend on those structures because we do have to build those structures. It's part of the grant. Um, but yeah, we can certainly look, um, Robin, you know, at, at sort of looking at better, less blocky, um, you know, like you say, Betty, maybe, it, you know, it's blocking the traffic as it's a super busy corner with that parking lot when the ferry comes and goes and um, be very sensitive to that. Um, one of the reasons we pointed the stage toward the entrance of the gallery um, is, is about amplified sound. We didn't want to turn it the other way where the sound was going straight into the cove. Um, we wanted to turn it so that it was more controlled um, because there has been some comments and Mike, I appreciate you know being um, in the neighborhood. We did visit 12 of our neighbors this summer to talk about our amplified sounds and of the 12, 11 were full support of, of something, you know, some kind of controlled amplified music, not going crazy with a rock band or anything like that. But we wanted to be very considerate of our neighbors and make sure that we were um, listening to what they said and, and keeping, like I say, some sort of control over what that sound sounds like. Um, yeah. And that's why we pointed the the, the stage toward our front entrance. Yeah. I think I've covered most of what some of your concerns were. Um, Jen, you might want to fill in a little bit more on some things. I think you covered it, Jamie. Um, I think that it will just, especially that outdoor programming space, we wanted this whole year to do story times outside and in the back, Yes, the shed is a functional building, but it's also really necessary with our increased programming here at the library and in the hearth. We really need that space um, for storage. And sorry, there's there's been noises outside the year for a while. Um, so yeah, I, Jamie, I think you covered it, um, but I, I do think that we can tweak those seating areas. Um, I just, I think that they're very, they'll be very heavily used by the community in terms of eating outside and, and meeting with neighbors and everything. So, yeah. I think the, the, I know that the, the back area, the stage um, or the, the covered area with the, with the storage is not an overly attractive um, no. building. And, and one of the reasons it looks like that is because we don't have a lot of money to spend. So when we, we realize that we need storage and we need space for our um, recycling, that it just made sense to extend that roof out um, as a covered area. That, and that was sort of the cheapest way of doing that. Um, so yeah, I know that it's not really attractive and I know Robin was trying to convince us a little bit on making it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, but that's the design that we sort of ended up with. And hey, and we're not we're not um, we're not sunk on it, but but we want it to be a functional space. Um, and storage, like Jen said, is really important to us, you know, with with the building of the annex. <laughs> I don't think it was a priority, uh, especially for the gallery. We just have no space for storage. So we do need something. Understood. Mm -hmm. Jamie, did you want to touch on the art piece, perhaps? I would love to. I would love to. So 
you probably saw in the designs, it's sort of a clamshell sh shape of the front of the, um, of that, that's that, that space in front of the gallery. There is a fascia that, um, that sort of naturally would um, welcome a wonderful piece of maybe carved First Nations art. Um, and that would be our public art part of the um, project, which we have as part of the grant set aside about $10,000 for in a public art piece. Um, so that's a, you know, we're pretty excited that maybe we can go forward on that. Um, and actually on National Indigenous Day, June 21st, that maybe we're going to have the carver carving that piece um, on that day under that, that platform, under that, that cover. Um, just an idea, but you know. A really neat idea. It, yeah, right, yeah. Can I add one, one more thing, not sort of on topic here, um, but we were talking about that area, I'll call it behind the gallery, between the parking lot, that, that big grassy area. Something that's been on my mind is that the, you might look at some more robust planting between that grass and the parking so that the two get more separation, even in the form of some berming with some planting so that as you're coming through either direction, it doesn't feel like the parking lot is actually part of that back area, like it currently does. It feels like the two are almost indistinguishable except for the what's on the ground. And, and, and it feels like there's an opportunity there to, um, obviously it's a bit of money to buy some more plants, but you know, if it's a partial hedging of, of local cedars or something that just defines those two spaces a bit better, I think would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why we put that one um, bench with the roof at an angle um, and the and the taller grasses sort mm -hmm. of between the parking lot and the and the annex beautiful you know windows that look out is to create a bit of a buffer to that parking lot um, is it, it not Mike that's what you're thinking of right yeah and, and yeah. even even more robust than that if you can just mm -hmm. I, I think that zone is the weak part in my mind of of having a definition of what it is and and I think some planting there would help to solidify all the pieces like yeah. give them sort of a, a boundary if you will yeah that, that makes total sense. And, and we were conscious of that. We really did want to make it a, a cozy corner, um, yeah. an inviting corner. And like you say, not an alleyway to the parking lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Great. Also a backdrop when you're inside at a performance in the, um, what we call that, the, the multi-purpose area, you look through those windows and at times you see all the green, but at other times you see really awful stuff. So yeah, <laughs> I think, not just how you see it from outside, but how you see it from inside. Yeah. yeah. We have to be exactly. considerate at some point that maybe the, the municipality will expand that parking lot. Mm. So we, we have to be very careful that we don't, you know, spend too much on an yeah. area that they may bulldoze down to expand yeah. that parking lot. Use, use plants that you can move. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If necessary. And use rocks that we can roll. Rocks, rocks that roll. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments on on what we're looking at here, Jeremy? Yeah, I I, I would agree with you, um, um, Mike, on the 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 idea that that, that area uh, with the big look that onto which the big window looks out on it, it seems kind of flat um, metaphorically and literally um, it, 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 it seems to me it's because it's almost kind of a quadrant formed by the the um, other um, supply building or storage building and so on it, it's it seems like things want to focus there but th there isn't a hell of a lot to focus on <laughs> it, it seems a bit uh, bland and vacant I'm not sure what the solution to that is, but if it's to be, it seems like it should be a focal point. Some, it, be it, you know, for somebody having lunch under the open area or kids having uh, lessons out there uh, or people just sitting. Um, 
I don't know what the answer is, but you know, just to think around that uh, issue. I mean, it's always struck me as kind of an odd space anyway. Um, in fact, I thought it was originally going to be part of the parking lot, which <laughs> <laughs> uh, I heard something to that effect early on. But um, yeah, anyway, it seems to me it needs some focus. We'll have yeah. to hurry up and get that that building built so that they can't expand the parking lot into that green space. Well, and, right, and make it make it a a, a a really adhered to spot that people start to fall in love with, yeah. so that the uproar <laughs> of putting parking in there would be would be stronger. Well, that's what I meant at the beginning about a missed opportunity. I just mm -hmm. feel like it's so bits and piecey, and I understand creating you know safe spaces in COVID, but it seems like more design focus could go back there and maybe let go of one or two of the covered seating thingies or something. I don't know. Or that concrete ramp I love so much. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, yeah, I don't I, like that concrete ramp either. Um, you know, I know, I know that <laughs> Robin had to cool that down a little bit in my first, my first, um, my first impressions, but it's getting better. And I think with the plantings around it, it, it will soften it up. I like the plantings now. They're beautiful. <laughs> they are. They really are. And we'll be using the same. We're using them. They're just getting displaced a little bit. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Replaced. Replaced. Not, not displaced. Expanded. Sorry. Expanded. Expanded. Relocated. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, if I, you all... know, and I wel I welcome any of you to come down and pop into the gallery, and we can have a walk around, please, and you know, share your thoughts, and we can share our thoughts on kind of what our concept has been right from day one when Tina and I wrote this grant. Thanks, Jamie. And you know, and what we're doing at the hearth, and 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 making sure that we're we're really becoming the cultural hub of of all arts and activities and making sure that we're in the right direction. Yeah, you know, word just popped up in my mind, wayfinding, this idea of where the front door is, where's the back door, where's the garbage, and that area in behind, uh, it, it's a fine line between accidentally making it feel like a front door when really the front door should stay out front. So I, I understand the, the grappling with how to define those spaces in a way that makes sense over time for everybody using them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Jamie, I'll definitely come in and, and see you on one of my scoots past the front door there <laughs> <laughs> and have a better look with your eyes involved. Mike, do, we're not making, are we making a motion or anything I don't think like so. I think we're just having discussions today, right? Yeah. Right, so it's all that's right. Okay. So if nobody I'd has anything else to, add we'll we'll say thank you very much and uh, move on to a few other items thanks guys thanks for uh presenting all this it's it's an exciting area and it'll be really nice to see this grant money um getting spent there to use mm -hmm. yeah thank you everybody thank you thank you thank you okay Um, yeah. On to number one. five, business arising from minutes. I don't think, unless anybody has something they want to pipe up about there, I don't think there was anything that I could see that um, arose from our minutes. Daniel's been obviously attending to the guidelines, and we're about to speak to that. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to that. Yes. Okay. So without further ado, uh, Daniel, I want to say thank you. Um, from what I've seen, a uh, big leap forward. <laughs> but maybe you could take us through what, what you've been looking at with the guidelines here. Sure. Um, yeah, I just wanted to check in, too, with the panel. I know we were scheduled to end until 2, so I recognize we're over time. Yeah. I just want to make sure, do you have time for me to go over? This uh, or how long? Uh, how far? How long, uh, you think? Has, has everybody had a look at what Daniel's done with the guidelines? Well, I've read them uh, over. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if the the changes. I'm. 
it's still very massive and I think very confusing. And I don't know that, I don't know. I'll wait till Daniel speaks, but <laughs> I do. I did notice some changes. Yes, Daniel, but I also still think it's, it's way too complicated for anybody to deal with, but that's my opinion. So Daniel, yeah, maybe you could just, just uh, in a nutshell, explain to us what you took from Jennifer and, and what you've done. That would be great. Sure, I'll give you the sort of two minute version and then people have to go. Um, yeah. And then we can, Rick, I'm thanks. happy to. Are you okay till like 2.30 or 2.15, Vince? I, I can do 2.30. Okay. Okay. okay, great. Yeah. Um, so I had brought the, the draft version to our last meeting, which I guess was in September. Um, and the feedback I got from the panel at that point was looking to move away from the point system and more having these examples of elements that we want to see in um, development permit applications. Mm -hmm. So what I did quickly is I went through and I took out the point system. I, I spent a little bit of time reworking sort of how it talked about approvals and, and what would take place. Um, one outstanding question I had for the panel was still, so if you recall, the previous draft had elements that were mandatory and elements that got you points. And the idea is you had to hit all the mandatory elements and then you had to hit a certain number of um, the points. Right. So I took out the point system. I left in mandatory as sort of a question for the panel of, do you still want, and I have a presentation I can show you, which ones were mandatory? Do you still want there to be mandatory or should I just make them all just like objectives that we want to Included, and the people would indicate, okay, well, I, I provided these objectives, and the panel can look at, you know, how they achieve those as well as just the overall effect. Um, and I then the second, oh, sorry, keep going, Daniel. Oh, I was going to say, and then the second thing I did is I went through just our existing um, just image library to try to find examples of the different pieces, either good or bad. And then what I really wanted the panel's feedback on is just, you know, do you agree with the examples, which I kind of just provided as a you know, like a starting point to say, okay, here's, you know, based on the images I have, this is what I think, um, but open for it feedback. And in terms of either good examples or, I mean, I think just as relevant as like bad examples. And I don't mind putting examples in and say like, this is not a preferred solution and we can show, you know, what those are. Um, so maybe I'll just ask ask you about the mandatory piece first, and then I can go through the examples. Um, so if, maybe I, I've got something to um, say there. The I don't think mandatory is a great word. I, th I think objectives, um, highly ranked objectives, how we, how we weigh the difference and the collection of the pieces as a part of the overall application, as opposed to pulling out certain items that, that we see as mandatory, especially if it, a mandatory item creates a struggle for an applicant. And, and we may not foresee something that could come up that makes it complex. That's, that's my comment on the mandatory. Um, regarding the, um, sorry, Daniel, what was the other, I had something to add. Um, the other change I made was mostly just adding the example. Oh, sorry, the, yeah, sorry, the, the imagery. Um, the design panel approved <laughs> the distillery uh, with, with a very complex environment that we were in that day or those days. And, and it's unfortunate it, it, the initial almost approved piece that was submitted uh, went through, on their part, surprisingly required adjustments a number of times and ended up where it's at. Unfortunately, didn't go far enough to get to where it needed to go. Uh, but I think that if we stray from things that shouldn't be done and really just focus on the things that should be done, we're in a better position, I think, to, to see a, a positive path forward with the guidelines. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I, I, I could agree more. The, the, the mandatory part is uh, uh, a bit problematic. The, we want to put them all as objectives because we want them, them to strive to get them all, <laughs> if possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Wait, putting examples of what we don't want um, may ruffle a few feathers, right? <laughs> Or at least picking on on things that are uh, on the island. Maybe the maybe the image uh, references to what we don't want should be not local. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, for sure. 
It's it's trickier doing the objective objectable ones because you have to carefully define what it is in those images that yeah. that are that, that don't work. Mm -hmm. So it, it it's a little trickier. Yeah. Um, so then just in terms of mandatory, what would the panel think instead of something like priority objectives? And so it's like these are the higher, you know. Yeah. Sort of, that's sort of what we had before or we have now, if you will. We have some very specific sections, lighting, lens, you know, like this, that, and some definitions within those. I don't know. We had 10 points. Mm -hmm. I just go from there. So maybe we have some primary ideas and you can flesh them out as you will, but there were some specifics that we would like to have in such a way that people understand it so they don't spend a lot of time on a design that isn't going to fly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I'll be perfectly frank. The reason why that one building uh, went down a bit of a rabbit hole was right from the outset, before it even came to us, the applicants were given bad advice. And, and, and that was troubling. I, I'm, I'm very glad we're in a much better place now with the way the structure works and the, the rewriting of the guidelines needs to be done um, so that it is clearer that the path an applicant is going down is goes a certain direction and and then the specifics of which are uh, prioritizing and and the list of the things that uh, are seen as favorable the the, the list that gets you marks for what you're doing. And, and those, those marks really should be sort of a, a, a self check th that if you're checking these boxes, then you tell yourself when you get to the design panel, there might be a few things, but you're looking like you're in a good position. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the mandatory stuff, um, if we take that off the table and we head towards prioritization, it just, it's that extra level, I think, of telling people that they're in a much better position when it comes to the, the panel. Mm -hmm. Are there not are there not items that we can specifically say thou shalt not do or show us or design? Is that too is that too harsh? It, thou shouldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I know you it's know a good I mean, question, it would David. It save a lot of steps sometimes if they yeah. realize, okay, don't bring me that, you know, pink stucker with the lions. That's just yeah. not going to fly. Yeah. You know, so somehow it has to be specific, you know, spelled out. I mean, I or, think some or, of the some of the objectives do say that. They'll say, like I'm just looking right at the start, and it's like signage, and it's like no waterfall awnings, backlit boxes, exposed fluorescent lights. There's there's no issue in yeah, any of the objectives saying do this, don't do this. Um, and you know, if there's places we can be more explicit, I'm happy to, yeah, so that's you know, to be doing that. It, well, and it, it, David, I'm sure you've dealt with a lot of neighborhood guidelines like I have, and new projects that are being developed with a with a um, a, a set of restrictions. And yeah, it might say no stucco at all. It might say no metal roofs. And eventually those guidelines get pushed and often thrown away or, or uh, it, uh, people build stuff that doesn't conform. And it just ends up with this frustrating process of people not getting along because they didn't do the right thing. I, my feeling is that the more... Uh, I hate to use this term, but the more innuendo that is in there before they even make the application, the better in a way, because they, they, if, if there's, you shouldn't do this, then there's something we've missed that they're trying to do that we don't want either. So, you know, it's, it's that, here's what we want, here's what we'd like to see, please focus on these elements, period. Jeremy? Yeah, I'm just wondering in all of this, what the best guidance would be. And if, maybe it would simply be, obviously the mandatory thing, I agree, it, it, I think is, is over the top. Um, and, but 
the idea of visual giving visual examples, not you know, from Bowen and from elsewhere that embody the kinds of patterns and relationships that you want to push towards. If you have enough of that, it it gives you a it gives you a, a guidance, and and then you rely on the creativity of the designer to mm -hmm. recognize what it is that's common amongst those acceptable patterns and relationships, and then to be creative with them um, rather than being too explicit because you, you want to encourage creativity, but mm -hmm. obviously within a certain parameters. So you're not, you know, uh, not doing a Burnaby or a Surrey here. Yeah. So it's yeah, like and, and more you, visual the, the, rather than ex, uh, explicit because we were talking about the problems about when you start parsing it out, um, you start to lose the essence of aesthetic, which is more than the sum of its parts. So, yeah. And the sum of this, the parts aren't necessarily just that one building. They're the series of buildings sure. that work together. And you don't want them all having the same token elements because that's what we prescribed. Yeah, exactly. You want, you want to see the variation between the buildings as well. Um, otherwise, we, we head down that road that that route of sort of like Santa Barbara where you know downtown Santa Barbara they are extremely specific on what you have to do roof pitch color everything mm -hmm. and and we don't want that mm -hmm. we want that eclectic but fit within certain parameters uh whether it's just the the composition of the building or whether the series of buildings mm -hmm. yeah there's a really really good book called by Stuart Brand called how buildings learn and it's a really interesting study on integrating different styles over decades and decades, and if not centuries. And, and it's, it can be done. <laughs> you can make really incongruous stuff, but it's quite possible to make sonorous things that, that do work out. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. That idea of integrating and being creative in that, but being integrative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and so what I think I'm hearing here uh, is is let's move in the direction of um, not using words like mandatory, but but prioritize certain things or collections of things. Um, more imagery, positive, both on and off the island, and and photos are fantastic. I mean, the more image search that can go on and and compilation that's easy to thumb through for for whoever's even just looking at buying a piece of land and thinking about what they might uh, do with I, it. My, I thought that was, sorry, I thought that was really great in the upgraded, updated one that Daniel did that you actually had examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that made a difference for people seeing it. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of suggesting that there be uh, quite a bit more of that. I mean, the old guidelines were all basically stick drawings and, and they work, they work incredibly well. For a lot of people, for other people, they don't work very well at all. So having, you know, th those photos really helps to describe what it is that I think that uh, design aesthetic is after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on that, I think I, I would love the panel's feedback on those different objectives and, and examples. And in particular, if there's, I don't know if we have time to do it now or if people want to send me thoughts they have after, but just in terms of examples of like, these are good examples that I want to see pictures of. And then, you know, either I can see what pictures we have or next sunny day, I'll go out and, and take more pictures um, you know, of what we want to see. But because I think I agree, it's, you know, it's having those, those examples to show people like, this is what, these are bits that we're trying to highlight and we want to see more of. Well, what's kind of interesting about that too is taking pictures of, of architectural elements is a lot easier than taking pictures of how open spaces work. And, and so, you know, with those images of open spaces, there's probably the need to put more text on them to describe yeah. what it is that's, that's going on in that space that's, that's, that's worth uh, pursuing. 
-hmm. or even plans of, of certain areas on Bowen that people are quite familiar with. For mm -hmm. instance, the library and, and how the circulation works around it and, and you know, what it is that, that makes that rich and how that thinking could be applied to something else that someone's making application for. Yeah, pictures are worth a thousand words for sure. Yeah. But agreed, it's uh, it's uh, taken leaps and bounds and, and, and towards yeah. what we discussed. And to the point of keeping it as much as we can um, concise so yeah. that someone thumbing through it can navigate it easily get what it is they need rather than um, kind of falling apart part way through and saying, oh, I'll figure it out on my own. I don't really need to read this. <laughs> but I think, D Daniel, what you've done from where it's at has has helped move in that direct direction considerably. Mm -hmm. Jeremy. Yeah, I just wonder if there isn't a mechanism um, that could be somehow included that would allow a designer to uh, check in with the design panel to see that their ideas are congruent because obviously yep. one of the whole points in this was to to avoid uh going out on a limb with cost and everything else and then having to back um, yep. it needs to be more of a steady progressive uh uh process that's a really know, good is idea there, is there is there a kind of a, a way that that could be uh, instilled in the plan that anybody can think of? Yeah, a pre preliminary review process long before one applies for a uh, development application. I, I think we have done a couple of those in the past. I certainly have for laying out subdivisions and stuff like that. It was a lot nicer to know what highways back in the day was going to say or demand or require. Yeah. And it's a lot easier. So it's, a, it's an extra step for the designer or the applicant to come. And it's also an extra step for us as a panel to have to meet. But certainly I'm, I'm far more in favor of being able to say thumbs up, run with it, or whoa, you're missing something here. Very, very important. Yep. And don't spend any more time on it until we get to yep. that point. So yep. and he, and here's our feedback. Here is our feedback. Here's, here's what we see as not moving forward. Here's what we'd like to uh, see you expand on. Mm -hmm. Is that something on the panel would like? Like I can see in our approval process part of it. It sort of sketches out a pre-approval review. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. way that people are submitting something that's not full. Mm -hmm. um, and is that something, you know, I'm never quite sure for the panel. It's like, do you want to see the full application with all the details? Or do you want a, an initial step that knowing that they won't have all the, the stuff, but they're sort of saying, this is roughly what the building's going to look like. This is what I'm... You know, sort of I, I like the initial step. I think that's right. a, a great time saver for a lot of folks. Right. And, and actually us too, because, yeah. you know, we had to, how many times did we meet on the, for example, the distillery? You didn't quite get it. No, you didn't quite get it. You didn't quite get it. So there's a, a bunch of pluses in that regard. Sure, it means mm -hmm. more of our time, but I think a lot, a lot of the preliminary stuff is pretty quick. And doesn't take huge amount of time to say, yeah, you're, you're, you're moving along or you missed this and we can, I agree with you, Mike, it needs to be done or Dan, there's some kind of preliminary um, plant uh, design approval. I don't know, however you want to put the words, but that's uh, what it. it. It becomes, yeah, I, I agree totally. And, and it becomes, and it has been in the past difficult for us to point out problems that are well underway anyway. And we, you know, and to say, well, Sorry, you put all this money and effort into it, but that's a very hard thing to tell somebody. But if you can truncate that by getting ahead of the game with the pre-approval process, it's just, it's easier on us in every way, even yeah. if we have to have another meeting. So what? Definitely. Yeah. I, I agreed. Um, uh, sorry, I, I have a hard stop at 2.30. So if you yeah. need my vote for something, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let me know. Otherwise, you won't get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got it. I've been, I've been over with my left hand pushing off another Zoom meeting, too. <laughs> so I think you've covered it, Mike, and on, your, on the agenda. Is that correct? I, mean, I believe point. we have. The only other item here we've got is... Uh, information items, new business or next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it, 
Do we need resolution on this as well? I know there's a, there's a recommendation there, Steph. I don't need a resolution, no, because I think I'll go, I'll do another round of edits. Great. Um, if the panel wants to send me any thoughts on the objectives, I sure. would love it, especially if there's things you think of when you, you skim through it and you say, oh, this is a great example of, mm. of something. You think, well, I really love the way that this building does does something. Let me know and I can I can include that as an example. Okay. Okay. I'll have a look through my photo file too, Daniel. I've got a, a bunch of photos of around Bowen mm -hmm. and see if anything pops up. That's great. Yeah, because I've been thinking about going to take more photos and every time I'm like, I need to wait for the sun. So <laughs> yeah. um, if you let me know, I'll book a sunny day to take photos. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Right. Well, then I think we will move to adjourn. Unless anyone's got any okay. new business they want to offer. We're yeah, all yeah, nice. We're all voting. <laughs> well, Vince, thanks for hanging in there. Oh, hey, Christina, well done with uh, how you hung in there, too. Yeah, yeah. new member. Yeah. <laughs> exhausted right. just watching you. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, all right, thanks everyone. So all I'll right. just tell you, I, I don't know of any new applications coming, so the next meeting might be um, to look at these guidelines again, and probably it'll be... If it's not early December, then it'll be in the new year. Um, yep. But if something else comes up, we'll let you know and we'll look. So Thanks, Daniel. Fantastic. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Daniel. Daniel. Thank you all. Bye-bye.